the worst thing you can ever do is someone you don't really know, cold emails. Don't say, hey, can I pick your brain? Don't say, let's go grab a coffee. No, they and, don't and I, need their brain. No, exactly. I'm going to sound like a coffee. complete asshole, but I'm like, but why? <laughs> like, whatever am I going to do with this? So inadvertently, I had stumbled upon this where when I would email people or I contact them about hanging out, I say, I'm going to bribe you. And I said this, I'm going to bribe you with the best damn chocolate chip cookie you've ever had. And so that was always like a uh-huh. interesting. Let's do this. The world runs on people and emotion, and it has nothing to do with like zeros and ones or logic. Sometimes it's literally like irrational emotion of just like I just want to help this guy because he's a good dude. Literally, I do it selfishly because I'm fascinated. I'm like, at the end of the day, I get a high off of seeing people tell me about the things that they love to do and create, and that's just me. And maybe that's not for everybody, but like I just have an addiction to being around people that are passionate about what they're creating in the world, period. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Community Made Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Gaynard. Now, as you know, this season is all about how to grow, nurture, and amplify your business relationships. In the first few episodes of this season, I shared why proximity is power and how who you surround yourself with is who you become. I shared three unique stories which served as examples of how to reach the unreachable and befriend celebrities and billionaires, along with my playbook on how to foster deep and genuine relationships with people at conferences and networking events, even if you're an introvert. And in the last episode, I shared how to become a catalyst of sorts by hosting mastermind dinners and other unique live experiences. So today I thought I would bring on some highly qualified friends of mine to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes peek into their world. My guests are Dan Martell and the great Saul Orwell. Both of these men are gems. Dan believed in the concept of MMT probably before I did. (laughs) I mean, he definitely took a leap of faith to support us as a speaker at our first event, and I will never forget him for that. There's also one thing to add on that front. Dan delivered a talk that fundamentally shifted the tone of the event because it was a very vulnerable talk where he was almost in tears and other people in the audience were almost in tears as well. And the cohesion of a community is really dependent on how vulnerable people are willing to go. And oftentimes it takes one person to kind of raise their hand and be courageous enough to be vulnerable. And that kind of sets the tone. And that's what Dan did. And that set the tone for all of our Mastermind Talks events. So I'm incredibly grateful for the guy, incredibly indebted to him, not only because of his support with MMT, but also even Mastermind to my dinners, the book would not be around if it wasn't for Dan, because Dan actually approached me about it because we we both held our own dinners. He does founders dinners. I do mastermind dinners. And at one point in time, he came to me and said, listen, we should write a book together on this, which is really like a playbook on how to do these dinners. And I said, that sounds fantastic. I mean, being able to collaborate with him on a project is a dream. So we ended up starting to kind of go through that process. And then kind of early on, I wanted to approach him to figure out the title of the book because I didn't want to call it mastermind dinners. I wanted to call it something neutral out of respect for him. And in that conversation, he said, you know what, listen, how about you run with the book? I'll support you 100% with it. And it could be your thing. And I said, all right. So I ended up doing mastermind dinners. And Dan has been a huge supporter over the years with the book and the event and everything that I do. So I'm a huge fan of his. Dan grew and successfully exited three startups, two most recent one, Flowtown, Clarity FM. He's a mentor at 500 startups and Highline. He's also an advisor to companies like Hootsuite, an award-winning investor in over 30 startups under his belt, including Unbounce, Udemy, and Intercom. I can go on and on about his professional resume, but I can't say enough about him personally. He's one of my favorite people, which takes me to one of my (laughs) other favorite people, Saul Orwell, who is someone I actually connected with only about two years ago when he was nominated for MMT, but we've become super close. He's an entrepreneur with over 18 years of experience in a wide array of businesses in the online space from digital currency back in the day before crypto to domains to examine.com, which is an unbiased source on nutrition and supplements, which is really like his flagship business, I guess you could say, that garners millions of page views a month organically. Again, I respect both of these guys immensely when it comes to how they they foster and nurture their relationships. And in this episode, the three of us discuss every detail you can think of when it comes to hosting a dinner, starting from best practices to inviting guests, whether to have seating arrangements or not, how to choose a stellar restaurant, strategies on kind of guiding deep conversations, and creating ultimately long-lasting relationships. A few housekeeping things, I guess you could say, before we get into this conversation. First is... 
we're going to highlight quite a few of the concepts that are covered in my book, Mastermind Dinners, Build Lifelong Relationships by Connecting Experts, Influencers, and Lynchpins. It's important to note, again, that Dan was the one who helped me push this book across the finish line. And the book has sold surprisingly well. I mean, it has over 4.7 stars out of five on Amazon over the last 215 reviews. Now, if you're a member of the Community Made group, you can access a free PDF version of the book in the resource section. If you're not a member, lucky for you, joining is free. Simply visit communitymade.com to get access. Second, we're taking a lot of the principles shared in this season on how to grow, nurture, and amplify your business relationships and go deeper in a live, intimate workshop setting. To my surprise, that first workshop sold out, so we announced a second one. So for dates and availability on that, visit superconnectorworkshop.com. That's superconnectorworkshop.com. And third... If you're a fan of what we're doing here at Community Made, I would be forever grateful if you would share this podcast with a friend. I specifically avoided the traditional marketing methods of building an audience for the podcast because I don't care for vanity metrics. I don't want a lot of listeners. I want the right listeners. And I'm a firm believer that amazing people like yourself know other amazing people. So if you know someone who would benefit from an episode from one of our seasons, please send it along to them. Besides that, that's it. This is such a great, intimate conversation with two of my favorite people. So enjoy. So yeah, I have both of you guys here today to talk about or share some wisdom when it comes to relationships. There's a lot of people that get it wrong, um, you know, and, and they they focus on the, I guess, collection of contacts. They don't build any deep relationships whatsoever, uh, and they do it in an in authentic way. Both of you guys have your own kind of flavors um, to what you do, and, um, you know, the actual – What I, I, didn't, I didn't even put the two and two to, together. I, I mean, I did before, but just – just right now, Mastermind Dinners really was kickstarted by, by Dan because Dan and I were going to work on a book. Um, I don't know how that came to be, but we were going to work on a book. I remember. You want me to tell you? Sure, you, you, yeah, yeah. So like I had written uh, – people kept asking me about my founder dinners, and uh, I was on a flight and literally wrote it on my iPhone in the Notes app. Just like I was sick of getting asked. So I just like sat there in like a two-and-a-half-hour flight. I thumbed it out. I've never done it since. I haven't done it. Wouldn't do it again. But I thumbed out <laughs> essentially what became like an ebook. I copied and pasted into Google Docs, and then I would send that around. And you came out with an episode. Yes. On how you do it, and I, and then I remember listening to it, and in there you mentioned the name, and I'm not going to say it unless you want to disclose the little present I got you. But I just thought, man, I should really do something with Jason because like we both share the same philosophy. So that's when I reached out and then I, it quickly occurred to me that, you know what, this is Jason's book. Like I'm not, I don't, you know, I, there's Keith Frazzi who is like the old school. And it's like, I feel like your approach is so much more modern and, you know, unique. So I was like, just do the book. And I think you took the podcast episode, transcribed it, mm-hmm. edited it, added it. And that became the book. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I remember we were kind of going back and forth very early stage and I was, I was like, I want to be respectful of Dan. And I don't want to call it like mastermind dinners, like the, the way I do things. And you know, we we're trying to come up with a name and on that phone call, you're like, you know what, just you run with it and I'll support you with it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for you, I would have never written that book whatsoever. So, uh, so yeah. Um, so basically, so Dan's been inspiring a lot of things. <laughs> like he, he has like a agent kind of claim on everything you've Dude, done. Dude, community right made. I wouldn't be where I am without. Yeah, and I looked Dan. around the room last night, and even Archangel, and like eighty percent of the people that I love at their core, and people that that I've worked with to help me discover who I am, I met through MMT, Jason, and the people. So like, community made, like times <laughs> ten. Well, thank you. Um, so I think that's all the context I guess we need. I do want to know, and I just kind of – I think we uh, I think that we were talking about this offline really quickly. When did you start your dinners? Because your – because you, I was doing dinners. I kind of stumbled across it. You did dinners as well, but before me. Yeah, so I mean my story started – so I read Keith Frazzi's Never Eat Alone – and I will say the thing that I kind of started to do back then was inviting people for runs. So he talks about like even workouts, like you can do a group workout and you know, like he talks about jazz or side or something like I was going to do that. Like a run, run. I remember starting like, it was maybe like Loic Lemur, who's like this, uh, yeah. Per, yeah, French uh, entrepreneur. Web, is that, is that who he is? Yeah. He yeah. does Loeb, but this is like 2008 and he just started this thing called Seismic and he was doing runs with entrepreneurs and I started doing it and then I moved to San Francisco and got to know the community there. Um, and then I kind of parlayed that into 
dinners. And really, just because I didn't know anybody. I moved to San Francisco. I didn't have a high school friend, a cousin, nothing. Like I showed up there, got a studio apartment off Craigslist, and um, and just started cold emailing founders and just bring them together to break bread. And I mean, we can talk about the impact, but I mean, it's been transformational. And, and what's neat when I think about it more so then than now, like uh, for I was there for five years, but probably for three years, every day I have an open standing lunch. And every entrepreneur, very proud to be Canadian, so he's on Twitter or whatever. So if you were a tech founder, pretty much from anywhere, but predominantly Canadian, going to San Francisco, I got the email and I would say, meet, and we'd go for this burrito place. And if you ask most tech people that met me in San Francisco, it was probably at a lunch with other because like my whole thing was i know you think i'm gonna like sprinkle magic fairy dust on your success but i know i'm not but these other people that have emailed me probably are at the exact same journey like i'm there and i'm like we had raised money at that point and they were visiting so it's like a different context so like you know it was like always at least four sometimes eight founders like myself and seven other people so that way they got to meet other people that were in town for like three days as well and like the stories of those people that have gone on and like build companies together, refer investors. I mean, that was a neat part. And all I did was just like route, like inbound. Let's what day of the week works best. And we'll all go out for some burritos. So, so, so looking back, and I'll actually pose this to, to both of you. Is there a specific kind of moment where you realize the importance of relationships and that it was something you want to kind of double down on? Because I had like a specific moment. Did hmm. either of you? I'll, I'll let Saul. I don't know. I, I got to think about that one. A specific moment. Man, I I wouldn't say it was a specific moment, but you just eventually realize that all the coolest people you know seem to know really other cool people. And it's not just one person randomly doing cool things. It's like a, a, a collective. And you kind of, when you ponder over that, you go, okay, that puts the onus on me to get to know other cool people to get direct. Like to me, a relationship has never been about business though, right? Um, I've got my, it, it's interesting. We've all come from very different angles. Jason had done something and it didn't work out. He was getting into this and he just kind of threw himself at it, right? You already, you were in so many different areas, right? For me, no one knew who the hell I was, but they knew of my company. Almost half the guys I've met in the entrepreneur space that are like, let's say, well-known or well-regarded, they knew of the company. They had no idea who I even was. Um, and so for me, the relationships were more just about, hey, I want to have interesting conversations. I want to do interesting things. And who do I do interesting things with? It's with interesting people. And that was what kind of spurred me to go after relationships. But I never had that come to Jesus moment where I was like, oh, this is something. Even now, I don't think I still have that moment. To me, it's more just like, this enriches my life. It's a relationship. It's a vehicle or whatever. They're all part of that more, I don't know, interesting tapestry that you ideally can say, this is what I what I do with myself. Got yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting as you, you ask that, like the, let's say the first moment where I realized like the quality of your relationship could add a lot of value to your life or like fix problems quickly. So like I hired a guy named Stu um, when I was 26, company was doing about 1.2 million. And his job was literally, he, he came from Bell Canada out of Ottawa. Um, and I wanted to hire somebody to look at my business and like, let me know, like, had I, what, if I built it right or I was, I just like on crack, like what, what was I doing? And the first thing, one of the first few th- projects we did together was renegotiating my banking relationships. Like literally looking at the line of credit, the credit cards, all that fun stuff. And he's like, you are not getting treated right, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. And we went through this competitive process and he like flew to Moncton and worked with me. We went and visited the five major banks in the city. And he goes like, and what, what, what he taught me and he showed me was like, you can't just have a, like a corporate bank guy. Like this is a person you need to like invite to your house for dinner, you know, offer to be helpful, give praise to in the press when you get mentioned. Like he's like, Dan, when we close this deal and you're we're working on this other partnership, you gotta mention them because that's the value. And I was just like, Oh, like I came from a technical background, so it's more kind of like analytical. And yeah, and yeah, it's very transactional. Like if you if this, then do that. And here all of a sudden he's showing me like, oh, at the end of the day, you know, if you're trying to scale a business, cash is king and cash flow matters. And if you, you know, if you're not funding your bootstrap, lines of credits and, and, and access to capital is important. And you don't want to be a person that's managed in a spreadsheet. 
And that's what I was up to that point. All of a sudden now I built a relationship with the bank and started to get them to know them. And they knew who I was and they actually knew what my business was about because I actually took the time. So like, this is something today. Like I just emailed my banker the other day because I was like, it's been two months. Like, hey, I'm downtown next week for a meeting. You mind if I stop by just to show you what I'm up to? Mm. Like now I wouldn't even think twice. Like, of course you need to do that. But I, I, I feel like outside even just business and friendships, like it's kind of like the world runs on people and emotion and it has nothing to do with like zeros and ones or logic. Sometimes it's literally like irrational emotion of just like, I just want to help this guy cause he's a good dude. Mm-hmm. Right. Like Kickstarters, like they're really supported because that just, that story is really cool. And I just want to see him do well. There's no logic in like, I'll probably 80% of the chance I'll never see the product, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but I don't care. So that, if you ask me to pick a moment, I would say it was through that process working with, uh, you know, this, like business coach dude, Stu. Well, you made me realize I have no relationship with any kind of bank or banker. So, uh, although I focus a lot on relationships, that is something I've never actually, so I wrote that down right now. But, <laughs> Musk uh, invite banker, banker to your house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you started dinners relatively recently you've done all kinds of stuff you do the cookie off yeah which brings people together yeah um a lot of humans together uh, i honestly don't remember when i first started doing it um i know why i started doing it uh so just some background i've been doing this entrepreneur stuff for 18 years uh i was in virtual currency i was in local which is search. hard to believe he looks pretty young i was like how are you, are you like <laughs> all day grizzled like, white in my beard the headphones are covering up the gray all beard, but... that white uh, but I was, yeah, local search, domain names, daily deals, uh, article development, blogs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and one of the things I have personally found for myself that was awesome is that because I've been in so many different niches, uh, I've been exposed to a ton of humans I would have never normally been exposed to. Uh, especially, and I don't want to pigeonhole us, but a lot of the people we know or we may be associated with come from the realm of internet marketing, which is both genius and psychology and all that kind of stuff. But the cross-pollination, uh, I always said bubbles, we're always stuck in our little bubbles, and I'm still in cross-pollination from uh, Michael Roderick, um, is that we don't get exposed to what everyone else is doing. SEO guys know all the SEO guys. Internet marketing knows all the internet marketing guys. So for me, it was really just, hey, if I bring other humans together, whatever bizarre conversation they may have, I can just sit there and let them go at it. And so originally it was never dinners, right? It was just, hey, let's go grab uh, a cookie. So this is one of the things I'm going to mention. I'm sure you guys have come across this. The, and anyone listening can learn from this. The worst thing you can ever do is someone you don't really know, it's cold emails, don't say, hey, can I pick your brain? Don't say, let's go grab a coffee. No, they and, don't and I, need their brain No, exactly. I'm going to sound like a complete coffee. asshole, but I'm like, but why? <laughs> like, whatever am I going to do with this? So inadvertently, I had stumbled upon this where when I'd e- email people or I'd contact them about hanging out, I'd say, I'm going to bribe you. And I said this, I'm going to bribe you with the best damn chocolate chip cookie you've ever had. And so that was always like a, uh-huh. Interesting. Let's do this. And so eventually I accidentally stumbled on this um, is I started overlapping people. So I might say, hey, let's go hang out at 12. By the way, at 1230, my friend Jason's going to come. You can hang out. All three of us can hang out. He's in something totally different than you. You're in something totally different, but we'll have an interesting conversation. You would disclose the overlap. Before. Yeah, 100%. Oh, cool. 100%. So there would be no like, oh, this guy's an asshole. He only put aside 20 minutes from you or 40 yeah. minutes from you or whatever, and someone else is coming in. Um, and so the other also nice benefit was if Jason's a little bit late or whatever, no big deal. We're still having a conversation. Were you eating a lot of cookies, man? What's like, that? Were you doing cookie I think cookie I'm really cookie? good at like pushing it on other people. I think I'm fantastic <laughs> at so like, having like, my one Holy shit, you stack six meetings and, six be, and be like all right guys you yeah. guys are all like i'll pre-purchase half a dozen and they'll just bring out one whenever the next person comes so it's not like <laughs> sitting there calling out my name or our name um and so that's kind of how i originally almost stumbled upon it um and then the dinners almost became like okay cookies are nice uh but we can't do a lot of people like we do maybe four people max especially with the overlap concepts uh sorry concept um and the other thing is i love food uh, I think Jason can attest for this. I know a lot of chefs here. I love f- interesting food experiences. So it almost became a marriage of two different interests. Hey, we'll go have really good and interesting food and we'll bring in interesting human beings and all of us will have conversations. Um, and I've, it's come a long way and going to other people's dinners has been fantastic. I try to at least steal almost an idea from someone's uh, dinner, how they structure it, what they do pre post, uh, intra, stuff like that. Um, and they've kind of evolved from there. So that's kind of how, how 
I got into this entire realm of um, doing dinners. That's actually a cool thing to kind of talk about because um, – like you don't have to do dinners. Like that is unique to you, oh, God, right? No. Like the cookie off. Then you did the sausage fest. The sausage showdown. Sausage showdown. Because I knew the sausage fest, sausage off, sausage party. Yeah, the yeah. window jokes would fly, so I went with the alliteration tactic instead. So yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like you can do podcast interviews. You could do an event, have speakers. I mean, there's so many really interesting ways to um, get connected with notable people, add value to their lives that just has this 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 uh, kind of rub off effect. Podcasting is a great method. I mean, that's oh, not yeah. the reason I'm doing the podcast and obviously it's getting a lot noisier now for for that kind of stuff, but to mean to sit down with somebody for an hour that you admire and like go deep with them when there's like no interruptions. I mean, that's priceless. You know what I mean? Like um so if, as a relationship building tool, it's a it's a phenomenal thing. And to what you said, doing events is another one. I mean, I was a, I still consider myself a nobody, but especially back in 2013 like Nobody knew who I was. Nobody cared who I was. But you know, seeing me associated with you and Tim Ferriss and Mark Echo and you know Mike McDermott, who I I adore, and uh, you know, over the years we've we've had more and more events. I mean, that credibility rubs off on you on some level. So um, yeah, those are yeah, those are some some ways. But I mean, again, to to what Saul says, like a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, well. You know, does it have to be dinners? Could it be lunches? I'm like, dude, it could be lunches. Breakfast could be. I'd say most. I would say seventy percent of my stuff is lunch. And this is actually interesting because um, Saul and I let, let's talk about like yeah, best practices around these things because um, yeah, I've had I've never really done a lunch. I've always done dinners. Always done dinners. Me too. Um, so I'd okay. love and and Saul actually brought this on my radar again recently. We had a call <clears> with uh, Derek Coburn. Uh, his cadre stuff is all um, is all lunches lunch based oh. um and so you can chime in on on what he said his reasonings for yeah. that was but for you personally why uh, i didn't know 70 percent were were lunches that i didn't know so did, would you, did you focus on dinners initially and then realize the the value of doing lunches instead i mean i i guess i want to say, say a few things like you know when you ask about the value of of relationships it's like you know i've been fortunate enough you know mark cuban invested in my last company clarity that was a hundred percent byproduct of somebody i met at a at a founder's dinner um, you know, the, the story of people always like, how did you get to spend a week with Richard Branson? Like literally you couldn't make this stuff up four years prior guy from New York's coming to San Francisco. I was doing these dinners. Somebody said, Hey, you should meet this guy, Dan. He knows a lot of people just cause he does. And, uh, he ended up meeting his co-founder. They started a business and their business partnered with Virgin and Richard said, Hey, I want to meet people that are helping entrepreneurs. And four years later, oh, wait, cold wow. email, Dan, would you want to, and I thought he was punking me. Like I literally, <laughs> it was like May or it was, I think we did in April and I thought he's, this can't be real. So like, be, and like, the, but I guess that everybody, like, there's no reason we do that. Like literally I do it selfishly because I'm fascinated. I'm like, at the end of the day, I get a high off of seeing people tell me about the things that they love to do and create. And that's just me. And maybe that's not for everybody, but like, I just have an addiction to being around people that are passionate about what they're creating in the world. Period. That was like, that's the best thing I could say in regards to like lunch versus dinner. Uh, initially I think it was just a, a byproduct of, of scheduling, right? Like the lunches were easy for me to schedule since the volume was there. Right. And like, usually with, uh, San Francisco, like you pretty much work all night. Like, I mean, I was, you know, in my twenties, late twenties. So it was like, I was working most nights. The only window I really had was lunch. It was a nice breakup of the day. Um, and then in, uh, then the kids came along about five years ago. So like dinners are actually, unless I'm traveling, I never do a night dinner because I have the kids. So yeah. the lunches, but the cool part of lunch is I, I host quite a few of them at my house. Like every two weeks I do them at my house. So I, so I've always said, I still remember this. I, when I first moved to San Francisco, I cold emailed a guy that was super notable, got in a lot of trouble recently in the press named Dave McClure. So shout out oh, to okay. Dave's kind of shitty, but it is what it is. And, uh, he, when I, you know, this is before all the stuff, you know, 500 serves and stuff. And, uh, he offered to let me stay at his house. He's like, Hey, do you need a place to stay? And I just thought like, I don't know. That's the cool, like for somebody to open up their home to technically a stranger, we never met in person at that point. We talked about three times on the phone. Uh, I always thought like when I get settled in, in San Francisco, I'm going to start doing things at my house. You just remind me of something pretty neat. Um, because, I don't think there's a way that you can honor somebody's relationship more than 
yeah. opening up your home. Yeah. So I started hosting these Canadians in the Valley dinners at my in my condo in San Francisco, and that's how I met Ryan Holmes, mm. which turned into me being a formal advisor of a one point three billion dollar company. And I, he can disclose the number, but it's millions of dollars of value. Like what the like? Yeah. So if anybody's listening to that, like it just like, you just reminded me about the the house, and I was like, oh yeah, I used to do the dinners at my house and just invite a bunch of Canadians, and like, you know, it's neat because like the CTO of Google is a Canadian. Like, yeah. there's you know, and so I have some thoughts around like structure and themes and all that stuff. But um, lunch for me was just you know, if you live in the suburbs and you work downtown and you're trying to get connected with notable people, they're usually downtown at lunch, so it's a little bit easier to logistically. But I will say, in regards to deeper because usually with problem with lunch like i just had one for lunch is that kind of after an hour everybody's got to dissipate whereas you know with a dinner it can go four or five hours right and i think that's when the real relationships can be um deepen you know what i want to start talking about um how you guys curate for the meals the dinners because you 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 said it sounds like your approach Saul, is more like kind of um a broad to see what happens uh, mine, I definitely focus on themes and structure around like types of, uh, size of businesses to provide color. I'm just curious, like, how do you, like Jason, how do you, like, how do you do your meals? Like when you cold outreach to those 30 people in New York, what was the thought behind those people and how did you decide who to invite? Um, well, I can think they, I mean, the, the strong commonality that they all share is I'd have dinner with them all individually on some level. Like I find them fascinating enough that I'd have dinner with them. Uh, and then, especially if it's a large dinner like that, I don't have to worry that they're the same across the board because I do assigned seating. That's one thing I do with my dinners as well. That's kind of uh, rather different. Um, so yeah, I mean, but I've I've done different themes of dinners for for different things. Like I've had a friend, you know, for example, that wanted to build a who was struggling to build an advisory board. So I did a dinner around him where I invited three other friends of mine who have advisory boards. And, um, he, he, like he didn't know it or whatever, but I knew he'd get great value. And I also steered the conversation around like, Oh, so, you know, tell us about your advisory boards type thing. So, you know, I've done dinners to support other people. I've done dinners because I'm fascinated about a topic and you know, the whole, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I mean, there's some dinners I've done. I did one actually in Vancouver with like a slew of like ridiculously, the most successful tech people in Vancouver, uh, in January, and I'm like, A, I'm not in tech, and B, this is these guys are just in a different lane. But I'm like, but they're like almost hippie ish, eh? Do you notice that? They're interesting. Yeah, it was Rick there from Unbounce. Uh, no, I didn't have Rick. Oh, there. dude, um, big beard, Ryan. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vancouver tech founders are pretty. It's a, it's an interesting crew. But I mean, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll do a dinner, and I don't make, I never make the dinners about me. I make it about like them. I'm like, I'm doing a, you know, a bunch of tech guys in what, in, in Vancouver. Do you guys want to come out? Blah blah blah. And then oh, oftentimes when they see, they, they get there and they're like, oh, I know you, and I. You know, it's been a while since we've seen seen each other and that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll do them like that. I'll and that, see, that people. that part I feel is harder from what you do, which I love, is the name tags. Because if you don't understand their relationships, it's hard for me, anyways, to like put them at the right seat. Yeah. Well, I do. Re- like, a, I know a lot of the people firsthand. That so that's uh, an advantage. Uh, two, I'll do a lot of research. Uh, and then three, now I just started probably the last five or six dinners implementing uh, implementing intake forms uh, where they have nine questions that they have to fill out. Which includes like your dietary restriction. Your, oh, so the, I forgot you did one for last night. Yeah. yeah. So you got like your name, cell phone number, because I might need that because I usually try to send a text the day of, um, and then dietary restrictions, and then um, what do you need most? Of three, I think you said. What, yeah, like yeah, what, what are three are you things you'd like of? to be doing in three yeah. years? If we were to meet with a bottle of champagne this time next year, what are we celebrating? There's like three or four questions like that, and I can start to like if I don't know them all that well, I can usually kind of. Dude, it'd be neat just as like a little side to grab that info in a year and email it back to me because I forget what I wrote. Yeah, and it's it's just be like, how'd you do? <laughs> like, man, this well, guy's actually, thoughtful. So that's actually you know and or us, yeah, yeah. yeah. and or I've, creepy. I've, I've integrated, uh, which was asking that question and then um, capturing it, and then uh, I have it actually in my CRM system. And then to follow, I have to follow up a year from today and try to figure out on my own organically if they achieved it or not and if they did actually send them a bottle of champagne um, that's next level so, uh, how many people uh, fill it out everyone fills it out no problem yeah uh, you so 
the dinner I did last night, I knew everybody well, and was just I've been overwhelmed as a late, so I wasn't on top of everybody. But I was, filled it out, man. You did. I did uh, yeah, too. I mean, well, I, I, like I didn't only even show one? up, and I filled it out. <laughs> but yeah, I'm mad at whoever didn't fill it yeah. out. But I didn't. I didn't How have like normally. I'll have my sister Rachel go through and make Be sure like, that everybody ping. did it and ping them like yeah. a couple days prior and all that kind of stuff. Like I actually have like a, a like it depends on the dinner, but like the one I did in Waterloo, for example, was a completely you know new market for me. Nobody knew who I was, all that kind of stuff. So I really had like this tight tight system like you know and i love and i will the nuance is you put invite only in the subject line which is smart yes, because yeah. i've had issues where people just i was with my friends from college and i thought i'd bring them with me i'm like oh geez that's great yeah. that just changed. really i've never had that oh it if you do enough like it's a numbers Shit. game it'll okay. happen yeah, yeah. they, yeah, they show up and they bring their spouse and you're like eh. and yeah. or it's like somebody they hadn't seen in a while and they saw them at a conference so then the whole meal they're uh, talking to that person yeah, yeah. and they're that not that engaged totally in, the vibe. yeah there's also and there's that that nice exclusivity slash significance feel that it's like you're in it's in totally yeah, yeah. exclusive yeah so i'm definitely stealing that i think that was a really yeah. good takeaway from so i uh, see so yeah, so I do the intake forms. I already know a lot of the people. So I don't do as much cold outreach as you do. Yeah. Um, I capture a lot of cold people. Like I'm like, oh, this guy's interesting, and he's based in L.A., so I'll tag him in my CRM as like, this guy's in L.A., and then I'll have that tag. Um, so that if I'm in L.A., I'll, I'll hopefully I'll deepen that relationship. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's a few different ways I, I do it that way. But you don't do it. Like, I'm the only one of the few that actually – I don't know anybody else does does assigned seating actually. So I tried it a few times. Oh, have you really? I did try it a few times. Um, I eventually gave up on it because again, if my idea was to have like almost like an ad hoc situation, um, my instead situation and and you went through this, I just kick people out of their chairs and make them go somewhere else. So one of the things I found that made it easier for meals and this not always possible is to do. uh, prefix menus so it's not like this person at this seat has ordered this if everyone's sharing the same food it's so much easier to be like you get up go over there you get up you go over there just and some some of it's not even some of it is hey i think you really need to talk to x person or y person uh some of it is just this area is really loud this area is a little bit quieter or people aren't uh you know there's different personalities totally like oh let's get someone who's a lot more engaging yeah. or facilitating somebody needs to maintain corner. the conversation there so like exactly. my, my style is simple i just did it at lunch right so you have like eight people i also think it's important like you know if you had six i always call it holding court so like my job is is a conversation router now i think that's actually a benefit of doing a meal is you do not have to hold the convo so a lot of the introverts sure. on the you know listening like you're better off doing that than a one-off coffee because then you don't yes. have to... You can actually like sit back and let the loudmouth guy like me keep talking and you know, and then everything's going. And you're just like... And then everybody leaves super pumped and thanks you. It's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and then Dude, you're like... That was a nervous yeah, no wreck. no problem. I mean, I'm still a nervous wreck when I do dinners. I mean, last night was an exception because I knew everybody... Like, those are all like some of my closest friends. But um, when I do dinners like in a new market where I don't know people, I'm, yeah, you, you, you I show up an make, hour and yeah. a half before. Just like, make sure they walk away going, that was time well spent. Yeah. But I mean like – so what I do is I sit in the middle. So like, let's call it six chairs. I would sit on one side, usually the back facing the thing, and uh, sit in the center and then let people kind of naturally – so I don't do assigned seating. But I will – if I feel like – if I have like a clay bear yourself and I feel like they've been to many – because that's the other thing I love doing is like, oh, so that's another trick. I I co-host a lot of dinners. That's one thing you do. Do I don't? Yes, do I co-host, and the reason why is I'm lazy, and uh, so they Smart. they're responsible for half, and they give me the recommendation for the restaurant. Yeah. So technically, I just co-hosted with Nicholas <laughs> Kuzmich. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Uh, he just didn't know it because <laughs> uh, he helped me figure out the place. Because I just you know, if you don't yeah. know the city, the last thing you want to do is get some janky yeah. restaurant. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so then as they're sitting down, if I feel like I know people they need to, to meet, I'll do that. Now, I used to organize these uh, dinners called Founders for Funders, uh, uh, Funding for Founders in San Francisco, which inspired recently, I think two years ago, I told you the story about the Great Atlantic Canadian Kitchen Party I held in Moncton. And that's where I met all these guys like Martin Latulip and... And uh, I do tables of eight and I do two... Uh, two um, uh, elders, we call them elders, uh, essentially like seasoned entrepreneurs, two pros and two, uh, four rookies. So the ratio is like four beginners, two people a little further, like let's call it five years in. And then people, it's just like 20 plus years. Yeah. And, uh, so I do assign seating and group them in tables of eight, but that's like, that was like, I cold, e- I cold called 178 entrepreneurs in my town of a hundred thousand people. And through those calls, um, decided the 
80 people that the one I flew Shaw in to speak at that yeah. dinner. And then I curated from that. So, and it's a lot of, dude, it's a lot of work. It's like curating, work. people understand. Like I, when I was doing the finance for founders dinners in San Francisco, it was 150 people. And I would spend a full eight hours get like moving people around tables to make sure that they were meeting new people and the right people. And the thought, I mean, yeah. I don't know how you do mass. How much time do you spend mastermind talks when the assigned seating? Oh, it takes me about, well, minutes. you have a, dude, I wasn't smart enough to do your freaking word cloud stuff and all that. Like uh, <laughs> check boxes. I'm like, Oh my whoa, whoa, God. Whoa, pause. What's this world cloud? Oh, check it's box next level. Going on? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I actually, the last, uh, event, the that mind we, map thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the last, That's so cool. The last event that I did was the first event where I actually had a system. Historically, it'd be like, um, I, I like, I'd be like, I, I'd hit it out of Super the park with, with certain ones. Yeah. Um, but other ones, I, I just, I want to ensure like people don't sit, so don't sit next to the same person twice. And when you're doing six seatings at 150 people, that's going to happen quite a bit. So um, I don't have the system, yeah, off the top of my head. But uh, I'll I'll explain what I saw. Yeah, I mean, essentially, what he does is everybody answers questions on like, you know, uh, you know, what are things you need out of this? What are some of your business wins? Blah blah blah. So then he's got like uh, I think a list of like who you are where you're from, what's your business, and the answer to those things. And you take every one of the things like somebody needs. Like let's say you're like, I need to find a chef to make me cookies. Um, You put it in the word and in the mind map for everybody. But what was neat is you made the bubbles of the mind maps check boxes, which I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, so what I would do is I yeah, so I I had uh, a mind map for every seating and I'd have everybody's name in every single mind map and I would say, "Oh, I want to and I'd read through everybody's intake forms and the intake forms are historically about 160,000 words every year. So, um you go through all these intake forms as while I go through it, I'll be like, "Oh, you know, Saul is, you know, a ninja when it comes to SEO." And he, no, no, do the examples from the, do you remember when you're like, for an example, you may not know why you're sitting and he did the whole row. Dude, oh, I remember that. So, I remember oh that. my people, gosh. It was like watching Rain Man. It was like, <laughs> um, I, I yeah, like, no, so I'm I mean, not worried. I was like, how did you do that? Well, did you like, I thought for sure you prepped, but you just did it. No, that's uh, no. So I, you're sitting next to this person I because you like golf and this person's dad won the LPGA tour right, and you need to right. talk to somebody in finance. It would be amazing, by the way, if a dad won an LPGA tour, but we're just going to look back. <laughs> that's how much that I know about golf. Us, but like, <laughs> <laughs> was Jason didn't even know. He's like, um, why is that weird? I wasn't going to call it out. Oh, you do. I know enough about golf to know that LPGA is not what his father should be playing. Yeah, no. Nope. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, so the, I, I'll connect people. The, the stronger the uncommon commonality, the stronger the bond. I, like that's at its core. Dude, that's, right? You should unpack that for people. So basically, um, you know, if you have – if I walk outside t- today and meet a 1,000 people, statistically, I forget what it is offhand, but maybe 50 of them, maybe less, but let's say 50 of them are entrepreneurs. Um, so if I'm at a dinner or an event with 50 entrepreneurs, that's a strong uncommon commonality. I'll get along with those people most likely more so than if I just you know met anybody or everybody. Um, with that said, though, if you know I have a eight figure business, that's maybe represents like point four percent of entrepreneurs. So to be in a room with other people with eight figure businesses, that's a stronger uncommon commonality. I most likely will hit it off stronger. Got than it. I never really understood that. So uncommon meaning that the thing that you know it's about unique. or it's very unique in the broad spectrum of a thousand people. Yeah. So. You know, I if I love you know a certain you love cookies like you and Saul most likely will connect over cookies amongst other things quite possibly right Got so it. the stronger or the you're more, from the same city yes yeah so the, the more unique the like if so you're, like while you're Canadian traveling in Europe if you're Canadian as a percentage you'll, you'll connect if yes. you're both from Toronto you'll connect if you're oh, both from the neighborhood the same neighborhood that, that's it you guys are you hanging out the, the rest of your trip yeah. what time are you going to the pool tomorrow yeah. yeah so you're looking for like those type of things oh I thought it was just like these like obscure things that you have in common, but it's really not even just about that. Well, it's- the more obscure you get, the tighter the, that relationship will be, or the yeah. more the more rapport there will be, and the you know the quicker that relationship will form. Oh. So yeah, so the, the example with Master My Talks was like these two guys want to bring their fathers to the uh, to the masters. That's all. Uh, nice. And the guy yes. next to him just did a trip to the masters last year and is doing a trip the following year. And then there was like, like, but just like you did that on so many levels for a room of 150 people. It was, but that's what we do. Oh, dude, I just went through the feedback this morning for last year, uh, our, our event in, in May. There's so much we can improve and so much we can like 
a double down on. Like, I have so many ideas for next year. Um, well, I, th- I think this is I think, why I stick to charity food off. Let him deal with no, it. It's, 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 it's overwhelming. No. I'm like, there's no way Dude, I, I can God. top that. Yeah. yeah. No, but Dude, I think I think God. for people listening, like, they got to understand, like, if you just do nothing more than just email two people and get together for three people to, like, go for a walk, that's, like, step one. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing, too. So, so a couple things. I mean, one is I want to say, like, the assigned seating, like, don't don't over – overdo it like assigned seating is a value when you're doing large dinners yeah. uh when the like conversations can be fragmented like if some guys but let's in- talk about the large because i have a thing about six six, six people one conversation yeah eight people two conversations yeah well the th- yeah so i'm not a fan of doing big dinners yeah. at all um in, in regards to going deep right like that's my you whole don't thing don't go deep right yeah. I mean, last night was we did dinner 30 people it was loud yeah it was it was loud yeah, in there yeah. you had like like i couldn't have a conversation across the table and then there's also the table depth that's i mean these are weird things Ooh. that if you Table depth is table depth huge. huge, and chairs. If they're like the cushiony chairs, you kind okay. of fall into. Oh, interesting. Then yeah. you can't really. Yeah. Your, yeah. Your, nope. your, yeah. So oh, I'm not a big fan. So, so what I do, like the reason I do large dinners like that. Uh, I mean, last night was kind of an exception, just because so many people were in town yeah, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But generally, like when I went to Denver, I did a 30 person dinner, and the focus around that is is twofold. One is is I can have these micro interactions with people, and usually can can get a good handle on them really quickly if I want to go deeper in that relationship. Got it. So I may have met them online, blah, blah, blah. Somewhat broad, big dinner. Exactly. And then, and then I'll, in a few seconds, I'll be like, I want to go deeper with this guy. So the next time I come to Denver, I'll just do maybe a dinner mm. six or I'll just do dinner or, or lunch with him or coffee with him or call Dude, with him. Dude, the funny part is I will, I'll be honest. I don't do one-on-one anymore. It's so weird. Uh, I'm, I'm I just different. do my overlap on, but I only do them on Fridays. That's what I've done. I guess now. I'm just so excited for people to only meet each Fridays. other. I would never want to do that. To yeah. Them. Well, it's, 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 I don't know. I'm at a point, like I always say, that the Keto is Strong Network, at least at this point for me, is like subtraction and not addition. For yeah. sure. And it's going deep with the relationships 100%. I have now. Yeah. Like I had dinner with Trevinia two nights ago. Yeah, I know. And when you said that, I was dude, like, I, was wow, like, I yeah, don't do that. I don't, so I don't know. Good. I feel like I might have went too far. It was <laughs> like so, I'm too but you're far also, in your the group. personality is different. There's no right or wrong answer. But I do a lot of one on one, like calls. Like yeah. that's the funny part is like, I'll do a lot of one on one calls. Yeah. But when it's in person, I just feel like if I'm in a city where they're at, like I want them to meet somebody else. Yeah. Like I just feel like it's my gift. So those, yeah, those those big dinners. Uh, I mean, again, I have. There's a reason I, I do them, and I rarely do them. The most valuable, and the thing is, is uh, also to what you said, I was the facilitator. I got no value in yeah. the sense of like I didn't get to know anybody at yeah. last night dinner. I didn't get to deepen any of those relationships. Yeah. I was facilitating the entire time, making sure like food was coming out, everything yeah. was on time, all that kind of stuff. Which I, people don't appreciate is a lot harder than one would think to do it well. Mm. Facilitating takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. And, and, and I don't want to make it sound like almost like a martyr here, but it's very selfless that you're so busy worrying about everyone else that you don't really get to fully do what you no, want. No, if you're lucky, you get to eat because you might forget. Yes. I actually didn't have a seat last night and then one guy canceled last minute. So I'm like, I have a seat. Isn't that That's funny? Like, I yeah. wasn't gonna, was that me? No, no, it was somebody oh, else. Um, but uh, but, but yeah, I, I, for, I, for me, dinner's a six. Yeah. Groups of six. See, I will say, I just want to say, if, if you're trying to do it to build relationships with people, six gets the one convo. Yeah. And as soon as you go to eight, there's two. Yeah. And, and the problem uh, is, is one of the problems with groups of eight or more too is that not only is there two conversations, which especially if you have a bunch of ADD entrepreneurs, I'm overhearing the other conversation, and I may have FOMO that like shit. I actually want to like oh that's jump and that's that. the worst. I've had people do that, like literally get up from one side of the table, really? and, like, go and sit on the end of another table because they just didn't want to be part. And that's I feel bad for the people that were yeah, in yeah, that yeah. foursome. You can't go wrong with those smaller, the smaller, more intimate no, dinners. No. Uh, so, like groups of six are smaller. Yeah. Um, one conversation is, yeah. is gold. Like six is an ideal number too, because if you lose one from a cancellation, then you still have five, and it's a great number. If you do like four and lose one from a cancellation, then you have three people. That's an awkward number. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So I want to kind of talk. Uh, yeah, I want to kind of share that, and then also the uh, table of six, and then. The first dinner for me is like the most heavy lifting because now we, we were all in groove and we had these great kind of networks and peer groups. But I had to do a dinner almost from scratch in Kitchener, Waterloo in July. and um, Oh, in that barn or something, right? Yeah. That, that yeah. was pretty so we, beautiful, by We the had way. 20 people at that dinner. Um, and getting back to like your personal brand, like these were like the biggest movers and shakers in the city, uh, which I was incredibly grateful they they – Agreed. And were these all cold, or were you warmly introduced they were all, to them? They were all. It was beautiful because for me, I was like, I'm not known at all in Kitchen Waterloo, so this is almost me putting back my, like, putting myself back in my shoes right. back Going in the back day. To but now I know how to do these dinners, and I, I, I learned a lot of stuff doing from them. And one of them was that um, uh, the importance, of, like, 
identifying connectors in the community and getting them to do like similar what do you do like dude bartering? that's the co-host dude like, yeah. finding like that is the game changer there's a few people that know there's everybody. literally like you could probably look at any network and i i got this dude it just like side like as a now that you made me think about it um book uh tipping point by malcolm gladwell mm-hmm. taught me the concept of the connector and you know i was lucky like you know, there's a handful of people I got built really. Oh, you want to know the secret to the connectors? This is it's obvious because we're sitting in front of one. I'm ready. Event organizers. Yeah, that makes sense. I moved to San Francisco. I made friends with the three event organizers that ran the, all the three events. And you know what I offered them to add value to their lives? Let me recruit speakers for you. Mm. I had the benefit of not <laughs> having to do an event, yeah. but be able to reach out, add value to the speaker, play liaison. And that's what I did. That's how I got the 150 people to show up for my Finance for Founders dinners, huh. was leveraging the three speaker, the event organizers, offering to help them with speaker recruiting, cold emailing all these notable speakers. That is brilliant. Brilliant. If you well, read Tipping actually- Point, that's what he talks. He's yeah. like, you got to figure out who at the network, if you just ask people, like, who would you turn to for this kind of advice? If the name keeps coming up, that's the guy. Well, that's, that's somewhat similar to Tim Ferriss, where he used to volunteer at tech events in San Francisco. Yeah. And that's how he met Jack Canfield because he was the he, he was he became like a normal volunteer and then he moved into the role of selecting speakers and he would start selecting speakers that were on some level beneficial to him as well. So that's how he connected with Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield is one who told him to write the book and introduced him to his agent. I didn't know that story. Uh, uh, Steve Hasselman, yeah. And then uh, it got rejected by a bunch of publishers. Obviously, then it finally got a publisher the 20th time, 28th time it, it got a publisher. Um, and then huge success, but that was through events as well. Um, I'm telling you, like, I think people, uh, if you, no matter what city you're in, there's an event organizer that's kind of like, you know, responsible for the big events. And if you can add value to their lives, even just volunteering at the front desk, Mm -hmm. you'll get to meet people. And, uh, when you're ready to do a dinner, they're great kind of reference source or something. Uh, I want to loop on this and I I actually, I want to make loop back actually on, on something that made me think of what Saul said, Again, getting back to the heavy lifting of, of the first dinner, once you do that first dinner, and if you're looking at just a, a market, like, a, like I want to go deep in like the Toronto community or that kind of stuff, um, to what Saul said earlier, amazing people know other amazing people. And uh, we did – I had to do a lot of cold outreach for that first dinner. We had 20 people, but they nominated another 48 people for the following dinner. Oof. And we so we have this like nomination process to be considered for future dinners. Interesting. So they just our, – our list of people has kind of grown exponentially. Uh, one of the last dinners I did was at the RCMI but in their library room. Mm. And one of the women who's there – um, she's done very well for herself and whatnot, but she was like, I always knew that there'd be like these fancy dinners in these like secret library rooms. <laughs> and now I know I've made oh. it. And I really, that kind of really hit me that it's not even just about the food, but that feeling of exclusivity. So now I've even more like now I've become more aware of, I need to find locations in Toronto or wherever I am that are so unique yeah. and interesting that it's not even just necessarily a restaurant about, that they could have gone yes, to. Yes. It's like, Dude, Oh, next, I would have again, next level. Like the place that I have, it's in the Royal Canadian military Institute. It's not available normally. Right. You, you can't, uh, I knew some caterer or something, I think, and then she. I was in some Facebook group through her, and I posted about, hey, I'm looking for the special thing, and the k- woman in charge of catering there po- saw me and messaged me on Facebook being like, we can do this. Okay, so who is she? Because I think there's a pattern there. Who? What was she? What role? She was a caterer? She was a head caterer, okay, yeah. Like but this caterer. is like a private Facebook group No, but group I think like, if I wanted to chefs. find those places yeah, so, in my city, I would figure out the catering, catering company. Yeah. Yeah. Fi- they would find know. Where, uh, find where the community of chefs. Find where they hang out. And it was that private community that I posted it in. That's how I found her. Man, that's... if. If I ever post a picture of like a cool venue, you'll now know where that came from. Yeah, I'm well, actually, that. the cater idea that's actually we that's use that for idea. our last mastermind talks event. We we ask cater what's a great prop, what's one of the best properties you've ever. Yeah, you don't ask the at. venue. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have this corner area yeah. over here. It's like <laughs> yeah, oh, stop no, the, trying the to cater, sell me your uh, spots. But like with, that <laughs> that that uniqueness really Dude, that's, sets that, apart. That literally is probably a thir- a third. You know, of the value you bring sure. is the the location and venue. Yeah. 
Yeah, I would say third. That 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 basement one we did when Neil Patel came in town, same thing. Like I've I, used that since. It's I love that spot. Yeah. I know the owner really well. It was actually his wife that I had the argument over the cookies that started this entire <laughs> cookie life thing. Uh, but it's basement. It's this beautiful live edge uh, table. There's like the salami and cheese on display. There's no uh, there's no signal downstairs. Yeah. Perfect. So we're just in our own little bubble. That's it. We have one server comes from the side. No one's ever bothering. No What's one's your guys' thoughts the on the same menu thing. though to build rapport with the staff and you're kind of a known because I, I mean I got that from Keith's book. He talks about like picking the same restaurant and I found like it's kind of fun to you know have the owner or the chef come out to the table. Oh for sure. Yeah. So I think that's there's a lot of value and you bring a lot of economic value. So like I, I always do my lunches downtown when I when I do my downtown and back home at the same restaurant. And like the owner like really appreciates it. One time I was sure. having a meal with like six really cool, notable entrepreneurs. And he just happened to say like, he came over and said, Dan, today's on me. Thank you. And I look like such a ball. Oh yeah, exactly. I, I was like, Oh man. I was like, Oh, thanks Jim. You know, like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, wow, does he do this all that? I'm like, you know, I, I might come here from time to time. And I was like, yeah. That reputation. So I think, I think, I think that's, you know, I, really, I think having a few spots is key. Yeah. Your having go-tos and, and make the time to, to Oh, well, this is a funny story so i always cater at my house this guy um piali shah who's who's like a chef in the city and uh he caters a few of my parties and the other day i was doing a themed lunch around uh local um restaurateurs and retailers so retail and restaurateurs yeah. and i emailed him about the lunch and he he goes uh let me check my schedule and see if the staff's available to to do the the, the lunch and i go no no pierre i want you to come as a guest <laughs> <laughs> so like you know inviting the yeah. owner of the restaurant oh, that, for that, sure getting back to what you said about like cross-pollination i think that's important i guess because yeah, we get important. we get stuck in our own bubbles. Because similar to to that, I wanted to kind of get plugged in to uh, the the restaurant scene in Toronto, and I brought in like Shep for a Q and A. And it was I didn't post it out to Mastermind Talks. I reached out to all these chefs because I had a reason to reach out to these Dude. these restaurant owners and be like, <laughs> Hey, like that's kind of awesome. If you're a chef and you get a guy saying, "Do you want to meet Shep?" Yeah. Like, yeah, it worked you've out. got a secret. It worked out well. Still, it was a little bit of an uphill battle. Was uh, it? Believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, I oh, mean, then some, that to me is also called, chefs are that's like, called natural selection. To get a chef to come out on an evening. Oh, that's almost impossible. Chefs get, uh, they also get inundated with requests nonstop. Sure. Oh, yeah. So like Rocco, he's like, I get at least one or two invites a day. Yeah. Like, uh, how do I yeah. choose what to do with my time? Yeah, yeah. Even like uh, the cookie off, I had it in, in January of, uh, middle of January. I have to, moving it to the end of January, because the busiest time is from Thanksgiving till sure. Valentine's. Yeah. Really? And so a lot of them take vacation for the first two, three weeks yeah. of January. So uh, there was about a half a dozen bakers who couldn't make it because, because they're on because vacation. Of timing. Yeah. So usually Sunday is great. Monday is great. I'd say lunchtime is probably good. That's the other one. Lunchtime usually, or you do a little bit later of a lunch, so the rushes all die down. Yeah, like like at two p.m. Done. Perfect. Yeah. But I mean, again, what I I think all three of us share in common is we 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 explore other communities. Oh, Uh, for sure. Not just only in the entrepreneurial community. No, no. I mean, to me, my fascination is actually uh, other. I've learned. Like software is my primary thing, but all my great ideas have come from other industries. Like yeah. I'm weird like that. Like I read books on like airline industries and oh, stuff. Storage. Yeah. Those are way more fun. Oh, yeah, are you kidding yeah. Me? I'm oh. looking for the patterns. Business books are so boring. Um, that being said, I don't do like I don't know if you do the like the the broad spectrum. Like every meal I have are typically thematic. Mm. You know, so I've done like you know marketplace founder meals, B two B SaaS lunch today, or um, mobile apps or marketing products. Like I definitely th- try to figure out like what's the theme, yeah. um, and then bring people that don't know each other in the industry. As because yeah. I if I don't have a chef, like if I don't like there's I think you talk about it like an anchor tenant for the yeah, meal, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So so if you've never heard that concept, it's just like you, having somebody notable or an anchor to kind of draw the other ones helps. In lieu of that, the theme can be the anchor tenant. Yeah. In my in my yeah. experience, I don't do that, and I'm not saying. And I think the in terms of like the anchor tenant, I think part of what happens is as your reputation grows, that you're bringing other people together, it becomes easier to draw people in. Hmm. But they're like, like last time, last dinner I did, maybe half a dozen were like best dinner ever. And I literally don't know if I did anything different. Maybe the location was really nice, but I think it was their comfort level and that they were expecting. I'm not going to know 90% of the people there. So we'll do introductions. He'll make us feel weird a little bit or whatever, but then we're going to go at it. So that, that's my approach. Um, 
I think you can be the anchor yourself. Yeah. Once you've got that. Oh, once you build like, that. Oh, once I you mean, build Jason, that reputation yeah. oh, for sure. Then it's even oh, yeah, mastermind yeah. talks. I don't know what the hell's going on there, but okay, yeah. I'll buy a ticket. We'll find out. Like yeah, yeah. that reputation, I think, is so important, and a lot of people. Uh, see the dinners and they try to skip that part but it's like no 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 I built these relationships people got to know me they knew that even if I showed up and it was a bit awkward a bit weird the person was trying not being like ah whatever I'm so cool I'm going to bring in a dozen, you know, whatever individuals together and, and look how great it's going to be. Yeah. I think that's really... Let's really talk important. intros. You brought that up and I find Ooh, that's a fast... Intros, that's right. <laughs> yeah, like how how do you guys handle it? Because Jason did something last night I don't think I ever saw him do in a while. Oh, intros at the dinner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Let's hear Jason's. Yeah. Because well, him and I were... There's different, different ways to do it, right? Different approaches. I thought yeah. you meant Derek, Derek Coburn made a post about... Uh, people like oh the blind a, intros I, I thought we were going that route oh, um, and then you just ask me just wrote oh, the that. longest yeah, comment yeah, yeah. on that let's not sidetrack <laughs> we could definitely talk about that but I'm talking about like yeah, yeah, yeah. at so, the yeah, dinner no, the, the, I mean there's definitely uh, different approaches as far and as let's as talk as even as before or after and during because I think there's a few things you can do there too right so uh, so what does it look like before yeah do you, what do you do do you send an email to everybody an hour before letting them know who's going to be there do you do yeah, a, do you okay, hide the good. attendee list on the calendar invite because I do that yes yes I don't like when people cherry pick use the Waterloo <laughs> dinner as an example reach out to these people cold realize there's a few connectors in the community and reach out to them and I got their recommendations on a few people so that's how I got my first kind of baseline list those who said that they couldn't come to this dinner because of scheduling I kept them on the list for the following dinner so that when I was oh, this dinner was all said and done I had a list of like 50, 60 people for the next Whoa. one so um, and it just snowballs from there that's from one dinner yeah, you I now asked, have a hit list of 50 because what I would do is I, I asked the, the first people I sent out think? like 40 invitations for 20 spots the 20 let's say take them 20 don't so that 20 gets moved on to the next dinner as a possible people for the list the 20 who accept it I say should a spot come available for the dinner do you know anybody else way to do it fascinating individual should a spot yeah so then maybe like 10 of those people will recommend so that brings my list to 30 now once I the dinner is successful at the end, I'll ask, hey, by the way, do you know anybody else? I ask the same question again. And then usually each and every single person will give me like three or four people, especially if I paid for the dinner. Oh, yeah. Then they're like, yeah, dude, like for sure. And then I'll have from that one dinner, 50, 60 people. Let's not forget road. to talk about that. Cause yeah. That's... So I, I do that. And then after that, I send them a calendar invite. In that calendar invite, there'll be a link for an intake form. That intake form has those nine questions I talked about. Um, then they'll fill that out, and I'll be building up like information on them, how I can do a sign seating, all that kind of stuff. Uh, two days before the dinner, uh, I will send out an email and give teasers as far as who's going to be there. So I keep it blind to what you said, uh, but I'll give teasers like you know the one we did in Waterloo. One guy raised one hundred twenty million dollars. Uh, last year for his company. These guys are good dudes. Another guy, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about. Um, another guy uh, was a former Olympic uh, judo player and was building a co-working space. Uh, there was uh, another guy who built it. And you're getting this from their intake forms? From their intake forms. Or, or one of the reasons why I reached out to him. Cause I yeah, because one of the questions you asked is something like, uh, what's one thing most people, like what's one thing you're most proud of? Yeah, what's your, like, your business brag? Like, yeah. And those kind of things. Yeah. So, I'll, I, so I'll send an email out to everybody as a teaser two days before to get them all like excited. Like who, I wonder who that person Dude, is. Dude, I don't do that. That's pretty so, next level to uh, And I don't do it for all the dinners, but those like the yeah. ones I really want to cold and you, know, you want to make sure that they the show up. The tease is brilliant. Exactly. At the end of the day, they're going to be looking at the yeah, calendar tomorrow, that night they're like, yeah. and they're like, should uh, I spend yeah. the night with my wife because I've been traveling too much or yeah. should I go to this thing with a guy I don't really know? Yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that helps. So I do that and then the day of, in the early afternoon, I text everybody yeah. um, from my phone and say, hey, it's Jason. Here's my cell number if you need it for any reason. Um, and then that's a great way to get them again, more anticipation. They're like, Oh, this guy's really, you know, on it. Uh, and then also if they're going to be like, Oh, I'll be late or whatever. It's just, it's easy. And they have my cell phone number. Uh, then when the dinner starts, usually I try to get them to kind of mingle first at like a bar or something like that. Then get everybody seated at once. I wait usually till everybody's there or close to everybody's there before I get everybody seated because what happens is some people will sit down, other people will be talking, all that kind of stuff. So get everybody seated, uh, get everybody – I set context um, by really – usually I start by saying like let's order right away because once conversation starts going, there's no stopping it. And if we don't order now, it's not going to get done. That I will say, Excellent like point. that is a very important thing. Is yeah. like you got to get the order early because yeah. you can always stay longer if the combo is exactly, good. Yeah, but if people got to bounce and the food comes late, it's kind of an awkward thing. Yeah, 
And then uh, once orders are placed, then I'll call everybody's attention. I'll usually give context as far as um, why I'm putting on the dinner. Uh, I'll usually say that uh, – I didn't do it last night, but I usually say like there's an end time. Uh, you're more welcome to stay later, but I want to be respectful for those who want to have to leave at like 9 o'clock or those kind of things. Because that's the one thing too is you're in a dinner and you're like – What was the context for the Waterloo one? Uh, so I said, to what you said, I have a great network all over the place. Uh, I do these dinners all the time. I live own, in this city and I don't city, know. I don't. And in, in a small community like that, I mean, a company like Vidyard with 160 employees, they support the restaurant across the street. And that restaurant supports their employees. Like there's this tight ecosystem uh-huh. and nobody knows who these people are. And to me, to what you said, once you get to realize like the face behind the business, it makes you proud of the community, makes you want to invest. Makes you people. love your city, man. Absolutely. So that's, I just kind of shared that. And then, uh, then usually, uh, for me, introductions can go a little haywire. Either they go a little wrong, or people uh, like oh, they, man, they people go. Sorry, they go doing full biography. People, yeah, yes. they go long, or they go. Um, they're they're super humble and they underplay themselves. Oh, that's the worst. Or they, Actually, that's or even they, more annoying. Yeah, so that happens. <laughs> that's interesting. Is you would think it's the opposite. So no, then, you're right. So the then, what I try to thing. do is have that all uh, that information and I'll brag on their behalf. So I'll yeah. go through everybody and make introductions, uh, and I'll just be like their biggest fan. I'm trying that to that's high wire walking, though. I will say, like when you're taking the responsibility to do everybody's intro, it's like there's pressure. Like I don't want to miss something or yeah. undersell something. If you know them, it's or easy. Or fuck it up. Yeah. Or be Super like, yeah, easy. their company name is... So I don't, so I, I don't give... I don't share... Uh, it's not... The focus isn't as much about like the bio, but why they're there, why I picked them. I like that. And, and, and also... context is like... Yeah, and how I know them. Or so they you, feel yeah. great about it. But, and other people but you like, did it last night because you knew everybody well. Yeah. You wouldn't have done that in Waterloo, I'm assuming. Waterloo, I did it, but I shared why they were there. I shared like... I invited Michael Litt because I think he's the unofficial mayor of the city. He's done so much great thing for the community, blah, blah. Okay. I invited Jim Estill because you know he sponsored 56 uh, Syrian families last year without anybody knowing. Okay, but you're government. prepping this. Uh, but this is coming to I, your, your intake form. Uh, yes, I know all this information from my research. I know. Reason you're why 30 I, people. You prep this. Or is this just like your weird thing No, like you do? Uh, I prep it a little bit, but there's a reason. Like if I reach out to somebody. You actually reason, like it's remember it because yeah, that's exactly. the reason why I'm invited. There's two or three okay, deep reasons it. why I want that person at that yeah, dinner. But so that's I, like that uncommon attribute that you're remembering that yeah, no one else Yeah, that's the thing perhaps. that resonated with you. It's almost like, what do you think of that person? These three words. Yeah, why? Because exactly. that's what... I remember. Yeah. So okay. I'll usually say those those three things, and then after that, um, I'll let the dinner go. And then uh, towards the end of the dinner, what I did for the Waterloo one, which worked really well, was that at the end of dinner, I said, um, we're going to go one by one, and we're going to share – you're going to answer the question, if we were to meet a year from today with a bottle of champagne, what are we celebrating? And we're also going to answer the question, what do your friends reach out to you for the most when it comes to advice and feedback? Two great questions. Um, And uh, the great thing about the whole champagne, all their answers were really succinct. Some people talked about health. Type A's, man. (laughs) Yeah, but some people talked about health. Other people talked about, you know, we're raising funding. But then they gave a little bit of context about their business. And I love that you did at the end of the meal because by that point, they've built the relationship to then go, I want to help that guy. And That, yeah. And it it, it created a second wind of the dinner because they already had great conversations with the people around them. And uh, after we asked that question to the group, uh, people stuck around for another hour uh, at the bar because they'd be like, oh, I want to talk to that guy because I could help him or, or I want to talk to that guy for whatever the reason. Um, Interesting. So that's the way we did it. Dude, I'm <laughs> seeing like the ultimate checklist PDF guide yeah. that yeah. you put like the con- like the phases and these things of like a menu mm-hmm. to choose from yeah. because like this Almost is... Almost like a book on doing dinners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost. But not a book. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Okay. How long do you set the timeline for your dinners? Two, two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two hours. So you get the ordering out of the way. So Nobody then ever easy. leaves, but it's, it's one of those things, especially if you have kids and that yeah. kind of stuff. And like, I always I like, out. Uh, to me, it's the calendar invite. So the lunches, I always do one thir- 90 minutes. Uh, or no, I do 60 minutes, but I plan for 90. So I do 60, yeah. 90 in my calendar, 60 on the invite. Yeah. And uh, for dinners, I usually do a three-hour block on my calendar, two hours on the invite. Yeah. 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 No, that's, uh, so intros, but but I mean like so if you were because like I've I did intros today at lunch. Um, I will say, and that's why I sit in the center seat is to play the cop, right? Yeah. And I think you always want to choose somebody that you know is going to give a good intro, like yeah. Clay Bear, yeah. to kick it off because yeah. they set the tone. Because the last thing you want to do is give it to somebody super long winded, and then everybody uses that pattern. Or and then you somebody, crack somebody. And there's also 
to get back to what you did at Mastermind Talks here one, like setting that tone of vulnerability. Because I mean, if you're able to like, you know, we had one dinner, the one we did in, in Waterloo, where everybody's going around like business stuff, and then this guy named Jim shared like his the, the champagne moment would be health, and he shared why that was important to him, and it changed the answers of everybody yeah. else. Yeah. And it wasn't just about business. So you can either set that tone. Of vulnerability. Yeah, you start it off, or yeah. you can if point to somebody who you know really well, who you know will set that tone for you. And the other, the other thing I do that um, I think is super fun is the plussing. So I always plus people. So you'll do your intro, yeah, and then I'll plus it by say what most people don't know is that's what you do. I or love did, that. At least the dinner. Yeah, I was at. like as yeah. much as I remember to and do it. I was it, pointing to Saul. People can't see me pointing yeah. at Saul, but Saul does that. Yeah, I well. just think that plussing is just a really great way to honor somebody. Yeah. Um, it's almost like a hat tip. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when you do the intros or at the beginning of the dinner, you're the only one that speaks to the entire table. Yeah. No one else speaks to the entire table. No. It's only at the end with a champagne moment that they finally get. I may get like some, like a few people last night. I'm like, uh, I got them to explain their business a little bit better than I could. Mm-hmm. Um, cause Candace was supposed to do it. Uh, she was supposed to do like one yeah. or two people I did not know. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah, generally speaking, I do all the talking at the beginning. They they talk at the at the end uh, as far as like the champagne moment and you know what people reach out to them for. Okay, and then and this is, I think where a lot of people kind of drop the ball on their dinners. What do you do after? Oh, uh, so interesting. I actually record. People- so I I usually uh, using that dinner as an example. I'll, I have a voice recorder, so I would walk around while people were explaining their champagne moment and explaining what they're what people come to them for and i captured all that and then i sent a recap email afterwards giving the names of everybody who was at the dinner with everybody's permission obviously the names of everybody at the dinner uh their champagne moment a year from today and their uh what people could reach out to them for uh, does anyone have an issue that you're sharing their emails uh no okay generally no and that's actually part of i've the never had that and even i've had some pretty you that know. that's in the intake form too is do you want us to share your email Okay. Uh, and some people may say no, but then they'll say yes when they go to dinner because they just yeah. don't know what to expect or who's yeah, going to be right. there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so then I'll, I'll send that, that follow-up email. Uh, usually I try to do it the night of or the following morning, mm-hmm. and then I'll usually have, I'll have a group fi- uh, photo that I'll attach to it. And then oftentimes they'll take that group photo and share it on social media. And- I think that's actually a really important thing is to, to get the photo. And yeah. personally, if you want to get the photo, get it as soon as the plates have been laid from the waiters. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, little tip you don't for everybody. Dirty don't dirty plates plates or an empty table yeah, like yeah. get the meals out there people it's just beautiful yeah. it represents the, the restaurant well um I, I mean personally i just i'm pretty lightweight where you know as people are talking and i hear like hey do you have a card i just go if it's cool i'll just send an email so everybody gets connected yeah. so it's kind of like i inter i use the card asking as a way to get permission mm-hmm. and then i just send a follow-up i used to do the whole like facebook twitter linkedin link in the follow-up yeah well, I didn't. My assistant did. And yeah. it just became like a three-hour endeavor trying to find yeah, everybody's contact info. Right, yeah. So now I, I just, uh, as much as I can, I try to use the business email versus a personal email sure. so they have context. And, um, and and a little information if I have about like who they are or whatever it is. But I don't, I'm not that next level on like well, that. Well, I mean, but like, it's not always like that. That is like uh, when I really kind of go out there, which are maybe beyond. one out of every yeah. like five dinners. Yeah. Like last night I connected every, like on Facebook afterwards. We all kind of Dude, that was other. actually brilliant. We should share that because I'm going to steal that. Well, I was just in, I was in an Uber yesterday. And that I was, was like, not like a thing you do? Uh, I, I thought that sometimes. was so smart. So essentially he, he did a message on Facebook and brought us into the private message. So all of a sudden now we have like a, private group of everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's what I always do after dinner. I find, I call it, I'm as a joke, I was called the Tornado Mafia dinners. But uh, one of my things I do is I ask um, everyone uh, something personal usually or now I've even started asking like, what's the one thing you need help with or whatever. Yeah. And so in the, my follow-up email, instead of doing an email, sorry, I do as a, a group message on Facebook. I thought that was brilliant. And then I have everyone's asks right there. So that's oh, you post the ask? In inside oh, the group. Wow. Inside yeah, the group. it creates like a so very light weight. Remembers what was the app. Yeah, and then people like people are posting photos, you know, and yeah. people sometimes yeah. clarify. They're like, "Oh no, no, you know what? This was my ask, but I actually wanted this instead." Done. Yeah. Can we get like last two seconds yeah. about the payment thing? And because I, yes. I just wanted to yes, do this. Let's not, not I make uh, people pay for uh, the simple reason that I'm always uncomfortable when people give me anything for free. Uh, I I've, I've built my reputation on the fact that I accept nothing for free. So the reason I make everyone pay is to kind of like we're in this together. 
I'm doing, let's say, the headache of the logistics and bringing it together and the organizing and, and the food. That's why I always make everyone pay. Just everyone feels, to me, everyone feels more equal. Everyone I, feels I do it more- because I remember the time that somebody else picked and it, it's just it is just it's, it's all our own shit probably yeah right? but like i just remember like this sense of owing somebody i didn't want to owe yeah yeah and i was like i don't want to i could i could have paid like you didn't let me just like it's like as if you think you're better than me that you're picking up the bill <laughs> i get it i get it like it's weird it's, and, it's I, and i just in a professional capacity weird. amongst no. your friends like it does oh, matter, right? Friends, like for sure. then it's almost like a competition. Among my who friends, can I'll sneak off pick first? It up. Like, <laughs> you want to pick it up? You better pick it up. You know, was like, we're trying to sneak off to pay kids. it. Dan's yeah. like, yo, yo, go for it. Don't worry yeah. about it. I'm yeah. good. So that's my logic. That's Dan's logic, Jason. I well, and I just want to say, I also think that um, anybody listening that's worried because like that's a big financial investment. I mean, if you're spending twelve hundred bucks yeah. every couple of weeks to host these, so I think I just don't want that be an excuse for anybody listening no. to yeah. not take no, action. No, it's, it's on good because, it. like I said, I talk about that in the book. Like, yeah, there's. there's there's two schools of thoughts there and uh, totally I guess f- for for me it's like it's a gift to have them there like that's how that's their payment to me on some totally. level totally like it removes all bar- it. if it's a cold outreach to me it, uh, on some level it removes that barrier to entry to be like hey the dinner by the way dinner's 100 bucks uh, at the same time again, but what like, do you pe- say do you say do it in the about- invite like i don't like how do you say it like is it i'm hosting a dinner and i want to invite you as my personal usually guest usually i like, don't say anything and they kind of come with, they it. come with the expectation to pay yeah. and uh, then i it's 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 so more think, like a surprise i think that's the way to do it yes. you want a them to come surprise. because they want to be there and they're willing to invest yeah. in a meal all right we're going to get kicked out so thank you guys Dude, this is Dude, awesome this is so good so much so good bye all right peace out peace So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for listening. As mentioned at the beginning of this episode, we touched on a handful of concepts shared in my book, Mastermind Dinners, Building Lifelong Relationships by Connecting Experts, Influencers, and Lynchpins. To my surprise, this book has sold rather well. It has an average of 4.7 stars out of 5 on Amazon over the last 215 reviews. Now, if you're a member of the Community Made Group, you can get access to a free PDF version in the resource section. If you're not a member, lucky for you, it's free to join. Simply visit communitymade.com to get access. Also, as mentioned... We decided to take some of the concepts from the season on how to grow, nurture, and amplify your business relationships and teach it in a small, intimate workshop setting. I love workshops and intimate events, and to me, there's nothing better. So we announced the first one. It sold out. We decided to announce a second date. So for dates and availability on that, visit superconnectorworkshop.com. That's superconnectorworkshop.com. Com. If you enjoyed this episode, show some love to Dan and Saul by taking a screenshot of your podcast app and pinging them on Twitter at Dan Martell. That's D-A-N-M-A-R-T-E-L-L and Saul underscore Orwell. That's S-O-L underscore O-R-W-E-L-L. For more details on both of these fine gentlemen, visit DanMartell.com and S-J-O. Com. Both of these guys have fantastic newsletters, so if you like what they shared, I highly recommend you sign up. Before I go, I got to give a shout out to Amy Barrett for leaving the following review on iTunes. She said, just subscribed and after the first episode, I was compelled to binge listen to the rest. Jason's transparency and willingness to be real and himself is inspiring. I resonate so deeply with the vulnerable story he shared about the dark side of entrepreneurship. It's incredibly valuable to hear from those who are further along than you. Amy, thank you so much for the review. For the rest of you out there, if you enjoyed this episode or if you're a fan of what we're doing here at Community Made, I would be forever grateful if you would share this podcast with a friend, leave an honest review on iTunes or Facebook, just like Amy did. It goes a long way. Join me on the next episode where I share another intimate conversation with two other friends of mine, Derek Coburn, the co-founder of Cadre DC, and the oh-so-awesome Zvi Ban, who is the co-founder of a fantastic CRM platform called Contactually. In that episode, we go deep on how to implement a strategy to build a killer network from scratch, why lunches can work better than dinners when hosting busy professionals, and much more. I'll see you on the next episode. Enjoy your week.